this is the harnessing cycle of the lava, and uh, we have to drill down into the earth to find water in sufficient quantities. Basically, what happens is that, for some reason, molten rock is squeezed here up to the surface. We have the Atlantic Ridge coming through, and the molten rock pushes two tectonic plates away from each other, the North America plate and the Union Asia plate. Why that happens, we don't actually know. But occasionally, this molten rock reaches the surface and forms volcanoes. But before the molten rock reaches the surface, it sets in magma chambers, deep down in the earth, but not as shallow as the other magma. So it heats up the surrounding freshwater and turns the freshwater into geothermal water, which we then simply drill down to yak sufficient quantities. So we have to go about 2,000 meters to put water, like I said, 300 degrees centigrade. Water boils immediately, giving us a mixture of water and steam here on the surface. Now, this is piped towards the separation station, and we separate water from steam. It's essential. We use the steam to drive a steam turbine. It produces electricity, which ends up with a very happy computer. And uh, this is also the conventional way of producing electrical energy that you know. Um, to separate water from steam is actually quite simple. Steam is light, flows out, water is heavy. So you're following me so far. Okay. So we, we got the first critical concept. Now the water that we've separated is still under pressure, so it holds a lot of energy potential. Uh, to get to this energy, we increase the volume of the pipes. So pressure drops inside the system, allowing the water to boil again, giving us a mixture of water and steam like we had at the beginning. Now, this is then simply separated again, sent to another system to produce more electrical energy. So this way today, we can produce enough energy to power the city But uh, we are still under construction, so we're going to add more turbines, so production capacity will be increased, so industry will benefit this as well. So when this will be fully constructed, electrical production will be around 303 megawatts. Are there any questions concerning the electrical part before we go into hot water? It is pretty simple, that's the best part. Yeah. <laughs> so we have to say hot water production. It's, um, the water that we find here is actually quite similar to the water in the Blue Lagoon. Have you been there? Going Wednesday. Wednesday, okay. Imagine heavily mineralized fluid. So we can't work with this directly. Everything would scale and consume with pipes and radiators. So we work with fresh water instead. It's crystal clear, almost no minerals to solve, but quite cold, only about 4 degrees centigrade. So we pump this water from the ground into a convention system, which is helping the turbines to become more energy efficient. But most importantly, this allows us to utilize the warmth of the steam that has gone through the turbines. So the water is heat is heated up from 4 degrees up to 50 degrees centigrade. Now, quite warm, but not hot enough. So the water is sent into another heat exchanger, use the leftover water from the low-pressure turbine to increase the temperature further from 50 up to 86. Now the trick is to get the water to regulate. We simply utilize the elevation difference, so water will free flow to the city. All of it will have boosted pumps on the when demand will be added. Uh, the water then sets a reservoir tax, similar to the ones beneath Pertland, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. on demand simply act to the tax, and water flows to the customers. Yeah. So thermal production will be around, be around 400 megawatts when this will be Fully mm -hmm. The city radio consumes about 900 in peaks, so we have to have other systems as well to keep the city going. Mm -hmm. So basically, we have another geothermal power plant and three other areas which are solely focusing on water production. Uh, about 50% of the energy generated from geothermal power plants goes to space heating, to heat our Third, to electrical production. Then the percentage gets smaller, but uh, snow melting systems surprisingly consume about 4%. Basically, it's under floor heating, under the pavement, so during winter we don't have to shovel snow because we use our hot water for it. Quite, quite clever. Uh, outdoor swimming pools consume roughly the same amount, so you can be relaxing in a jacuzzi in a blizzard, which is surreal, but nice. And uh, greenhouses all over the island consume about 2% of the heat. So we can grow some mushrooms and uh, tomatoes, cucumbers, mm -hmm. fresh droppers in, in December. It's quite nice to have easy access to all. Yeah, yeah. So coming back to this picture, uh, we know water flow from here to Reykjavik <coughs> is heated in the fresh water. The geothermal water hasn't gone anywhere. So 
I mean, we settled the top level blue lagoon outside. So basically, what we do is that we keep the water separate throughout the system. We gather the water up in the end. We allow this water to flow into a reinjection well. The reinjection well has the same depth, relatively, as the production well. So the water is released back down into the same area that we took it from. There, yeah, you have to reheat the water and it comes back in the and surface. So geothermal energy is one of the greenest energy sources that you can find. It's one of the cheapest energy sources that you can find. And it's sustainable. For the scale of the renewable. If you're careful to protect your system, because geothermal, as we learn on the third level, third level you can over exploit geothermal energy. So you have to work in the equilibrium with output and input. It isn't completely phased out, sure. sadly. So are there any questions concerning the 